Let's go on now. Um, what we did a moment ago was to set up our brand new WordPress 4.0 site. And as I said, now that we've created this, I want to go back to PHP, my admin, and see what my WordPress database actually looks like. So you can, uh, on, your, on your web browser address, you can go to localhost slash phpmyadmin. That's the shortcut to take you back to phpmyadmin. Or you could go to localhost and then click on phpmyadmin. Another way is to type localhost slash phpmyadmin. Let's go back to that phpmyadmin screen. When you go there, then you can click on your WP4 database on the left side. And now it should be full of tables. It should be full of content. So think about each one of these items here, known as tables. Think of each of them as like a sheet of paper that has something saved to it. This sheet of paper has a list of all the users. This sheet of paper has a list of all the products. This sheet of paper has a list of uh, all the subscribers to your WordPress. And therefore, that list is a type of a database. So here, notice, I'm looking at the WP4 database. Here's the tables. And if you scroll down here, you've got WP users. Click to browse. WP users. And this should show ID1, user login name, admin, and then the encrypted password. Oh, there's the email that I had set up. When were they registered? The date. So this is what a database is it holds information. Notice all the information that it showed, uh, that it stored. So this is one record in this table of our database. If we add more users, then it would add ID number two, user Victor, password whatever, email victor at victor.com. Are we going to remove user from here? We could. Exactly. So we can select right here there's a delete button so this is one way this is uh, this is like at the very root of it all everything about our, our WordPress site is here this is the list of every product and the list of every user and every page and everything is here so you can see for example WP posts on the left side if you click on that WP posts and then it's got ID1 post content. Welcome to WordPress. This is your first post. ID2. This is an example page. It's different from... That sounds familiar. We've already got a post when we first set up WordPress, the Hello World post, and we've already got a page, the sample page. This is where they exist. Look at that post title, Hello World, sample page, and then a draft. These have been published. Comments are open. So everything that we see in the pretty WordPress interface is all happening and being stored in the database, the not-so-pretty database. Everything is here. If we, ser if, we saved, if we look under taxonomy on the left, we don't have any at the moment, but those would be our categories or our keywords, I mean tags, our, our categories and tags and such. and they're all linked together. Sometimes you don't see everything in one table. For example, when I was looking at posts, here I thought there was a difference between posts and pages. Well, there is in, the, in, in WordPress the, the front end of it, but in the back end in the database it's all being stored in one little section, one table. And somewhere else here it delineates which is a post and which is a 
a page. Right here, there's a, uh, there's a field called post type, and these that are marked with post are posts, and these that are marked with pages are pages. So again, this is very, <coughs> this is very advanced stuff to, to ever look at a database. How many of you have ever peered into the face of a database? A few of you. Okay. Uh, so everyone else, uh, this is this is what a database is. Technically, a database is is a is a is a collection of, of text. But what PHP My Admin does is translates that into buttons and screens and um, tabs and such. But all of that, we could also see it as raw code, which is even harder to work with. And um, if we know SQL, we can actually write the manual commands to create new posts and pages and all that. I don't recommend it. That's very, very advanced. I wouldn't even attempt that. Uh, but this is what's happening behind the scenes. Everything that is that is our database, or everything that is our WordPress is this database. Let's look at this. This is interesting. Under the WP Options table, this is where it's listing all of the stuff, apparently, that's under Settings, the Settings screen. What's the site URL? Home, the blog name, the blog description, that's the tagline. I could change it here if I wanted, but I would be a little bit hesitant to. I would actually change it in the dashboard. But if I wanted to change something in the database, how do you think I might do that? Perhaps click the edit button. Don't click the edit button. But if we were to, we can click edit and then this is going to change. It's going to change it. And then on the, on the dashboard, change it right there. So this is all the pretty interface. In the back end, it's a lot of database stuff. And most of us are never going to need to edit the database. But I'm showing you, that's why by default, when we go to our different pages, remember that our sample page, the address up here is saying, show me page ID 2. Well, the database under posts ID 2, right there, is the sample page. Yes. If you had a, you want to capture your visitors that come to your, your website, and you say, you know, enter your you know, main email address. Mm -hmm. Would that go to this database? Yes, else? most likely, it'll go in here. It keeps everything together in this WP4 database. It'll put your products in here. It'll put your subscribers, your visitors, etc. So most plugins that we install that need to save some data save themselves to this database. It just makes itself a new a new table. Kind of, yeah, you can think of these sort of as folders. Each of these is a folder that holds the users. This holds the posts and the tags. Technically they're called tables. But yeah, think of them as folders and then you'll have a new table or folder that holds your subscribers. No, you won't need to create it. Most likely, your plugin will do it all for you. Oh, no, I'm talking about the, 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 the screen. Would that be on your, your, your homepage? Where you say, oh, enter your name and database here. Uh, name I've seen it different ways. I've seen that when people visit your site, the first thing you, that happens is a pop up that says, add your name and email to subscribe to this. I think that's annoying but we can do it. Uh, the other way is that on the edge, after you've read an article on the edge, it would say, don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter. I think that's a little less intrusive. Or you could have an omnipresent in the bottom right corner, a little icon that is always there that says, don't forget to subscribe. That's also not intrusive. Yes? Uh, this is a different question to that user. So if you created a WordPress site, I'm making it simple. And somebody, you know, when you that up part where they log in and they want to scan and then they put their information in. Is this where you can edit them out on the users? You could, but again, um, I'm showing this that this is like this is like uh, the raw power of it all. Okay. We really want to, as much as possible, use the dashboard. 
use the WordPress dashboard. This is where it's going to be a, a, a user-friendly button. Sometimes I can't tell if they're legitimate people or not. So hmm. when I opened up the site the first time around, all of a sudden I had a bunch of users. Yeah. Like spam or something because they said, oh, I like their posting and it's great. And, they, you know, <laughs> and you click to prove. I didn't even yeah. put any blog in or anything. All of a sudden I got five people there. And but did that But that but did that show up somewhere over here, like under comments, for example? No, it was under users. Oh, really? Okay, that might be a bug, or not a bug, but some sort of setting that you don't quite have right. Maybe subscribers? Yes, yeah, there are subscribers. You know, because oh. I just opened up the site and I didn't put anything, and when I came back, there's like five new people saying that they like, they like my Hello World post. So again, I would go into users and select from users here and select delete. I would do it this way. You could go into the database and edit the database, but again, I wouldn't be comfortable with letting most people get into the database. All right, so that's uh, that's just our look at the database. This is all behind the scenes. We can now that now that stuff is there. If we export, we'll actually get a file. But again, not necessary because we're going to be using the Duplicator plugin. So I want to address something that didn't uh, work previously, and now I have an answer. And, and thanks for that, um, that I was given a little bit of help with this. So what we'll do here is, let's do this. Let's go to our, um, let's go back to our WordPress uh, dashboard. Remember, you can always get back to it by typing uh, the localhost slash wp4 slash wp dash admin. You can always go back to your admin screen by typing WP admin at the end of the address um, the end of the address um, of the site. So technically, think about this. If I've got victorsbakery.com and it's a WordPress, I could go to slash WP admin. Once this is all set up and I'm on my own .com, I could log into my admin that way. So the wp-admin is a standard entry point to log in to your admin. If you're logged out, it'll pop up. Please log in. So don't think that anyone in the world can just go to that address and they've got your dashboard. They have to log in. The problem is that if someone knows that that's that address, they could possibly then try to click retrieve password or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'll talk about it a little later how to set this up so that it's something more like this. victorsbakery.com slash secret slash WP admin. That way people won't know where is the WP admin. It's in a subfolder. That's much more secure because by default every WordPress site, try it. Go to someone's site and if you know, if you think it's WordPress, try to put that address and it will probably have their login screen. Less secure. We'll talk about my login slash WP admin, something that people wouldn't know or guess. So when we get to that part of the class, we'll talk about that. If you want to start researching, that's basically you can do a, a keyword search for giving WordPress its own directory. We'll do it together, but if you want to start researching, it's called giving WordPress its own directory. Security. Because this way people will not know where is your login screen. Another smart thing to do so that people might not hack into your WordPress site is not use a username called admin. <laughs> so we're going to change that a little later. So now that we're in this more advanced class, we have to talk about more advanced things because eventually we're going to have e-commerce capabilities. We don't want our um, site hacked. We don't want um, people to try to guess our passwords and such. So if we don't use the common admin, that'll help. If we don't use the common login screen, that'll help. Uh, if we don't use a common password like one, two, three, four, five, that'll help. But we'll get to that. 
what I want to show, what I was going to show here is, um, let's go, we should be in the dashboard. Let's go to Settings General. No, I'm sorry. Settings Permalinks. Settings Permalinks. I touched on this before. We'll get into it deep, deeper. By default, WordPress uses web links which have question marks and lots of numbers in them because that's how the database keeps track of them. However, WordPress offers you the ability to create a custom URL structure for your permalinks and archives. This can improve the aesthetics, usability, and forward compatibility of your links. So, this is the default. We're going to get a site that looks like this. Question P equals 123. Record number 123 in the database. We have some other ways to, to set this up. The one I recommend that we use is post name. Notice the structure that it's going to give us. The name of your site slash the name of your um, of your post, either post or page or product. So this is going to be a better scheme for your addresses. So go ahead and activate that. And then save changes. Select post name and then save. So this is a much more friendly uh, scheme. It allows that when people, for example, if you share this link on Facebook, instead of it saying mysite.com question mark equals 99, it'll say mysite.com slash how to use Twitter. And then people will be more um, trusting to click the link instead of just some weird numbers. This is also better thinking about search engine optimization. Because search engines like Bing, Yahoo, Google, uh, they will give more precedence, more preference, preference to a link that is, you know, victor's, victor.com slash how to use Twitter instead of victor.com slash 1259. Because the keywords of what that post is about are in the address and it helps uh, Google sort your content easier. And when someone searches, how do I use Twitter? You have more of a chance of your page showing up than a page called 1259. So this is what I recommend. Make sure you click Save. And then we have to address a little problem which you normally don't need to address in the real world, but it seems that we do in WAMP. This is the problem. Let's go back to Visit Site. On the top over here, Visit Your Site. Here's my home screen. Cool. I have the sample page on the top right. If I hover my mouse over it, it tells me you're about to go to localhost WP sample page. It's exactly what I want. Click on it. Not found. So then when you click on something else like Hello World, it says here it wants to go to Hello World. But when I click on it, not found. When you click just about any of your links, not found. So what's happening, and this is a quirk perhaps of WAMP. I'm not sure if this is applicable on MAMP. So if you've got MAMP, you, you, you should uh, check this and, and tell me. We'll see if, we, if there's any problem. This is a quirk of WAMP. What's happening is that it did not... It does not have a... Um, a module active that lets this work. I don't have it in any of my notes, but it's a simple one-click fix. Here's what we need to do. We need to tell WAMP, pay attention to these new links. It's still using the old links, in a sense. Here's what we do. 
uh, on your bottom, uh, on the bottom right here where you see your double arrow, click on that and we're going to click on the WAMP icon again. The little W. Go over to the Apache section. So we're going to change something in WAMP. Click on the WAMP icon, click the Apache section, and click on Apache modules. These are some of the settings that are running behind the scenes. The ones that are checked are active, so that means we can use CGI code that's active. We've got something called a uh, cache disk module. I don't know what it is, but it's probably important. That one's on. Something that is not on, for example, is CERN meta module. I don't know what that is. It's not on. But the one that is not on that allows this to work is the problem. So we're going to scroll down. to It's alphabetical, so we're going to go all the way down to the section of R's. We're going to look for one called Rewrite Module. R-E-W-R-I-T-E. -E, rewrite Module. Scroll down, you should see Rewrite Module, and it's off. Click it on, and that should help us with the problem we're having. When I click on it, does the whole list disappear? I think it should, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. and that whole screen should disappear. Rewrite module. I'm going to go back to uh, I'm going to go back to my WordPress, back to the home screen and maybe refresh it here. And click on sample page. Sample page. Click on hello world post. Hello world post. Right, so it's highly recommended to change your permalinks just like we did. Back on dashboard, settings, permalinks to the post name. Question? Um, how do I reload the page? You can click up on the web browser this little spinning arrow to reload. Thank you. So it's recommended to use this structure for your links. But in our case, if we had not activated that mod, that module, rewrite, um, this wouldn't have worked. Usually, when you're on a real server, it works. Because GoDaddy is the one administering the, the server, and they've usually activated these useful modules. In our case, I don't know why it's not active. I think it's a useful one, but the WAMP server developer people, they don't have it on, and I just showed you how to activate it. So one more time. We'll have to do this again when we come back next week, of course, because it'll forget what we did. But it was under the WAMP server icon, Apache, Apache modules, rewrite module. Once it's checked on, then this permalink structure should work. Did that work for everyone? All right, so we've peeled back the curtain uh, and looked at the database itself. Let's peel back another curtain here. Let's go back to the www folder. Minimize everything. 
minimize your windows and go back to the window where we've got the WP4 folder like that, the WWW folder. So this uh, folder currently, for your information, is 16.8 megabytes with 1,158 files and 118 folders. And we haven't even done anything. We just installed WordPress. So what, what are some of these files that we have? Let's look inside of the WP folder. Sometimes we're going to need to do this as well. Sometimes we're going to need to go into the folder where our site is at. And if you are on Bluehost, GoDaddy, etc., this is known as, uh, this is usually, you can call it as a FTP. This is looking at the, at the or the, the root folder, or the home folder. Or uh, sometimes uh, they call it also the file manager. So whatever your provider has, GoDaddy has something called file manager, it also has FTP access, Bluehost, they've all got something like this, where it's, I want to see the folder on the server. Because sometimes we need to edit the files themselves outside of WordPress. So uh, double-click that WP folder, and here you get a bunch of PHP files a few folders, and a couple of extra miscellaneous files. Um, oh, look, there's... Can you double-click on the config sample? And that looks familiar. WP admin folder. That's what I said about when you go to Victor's Bakery slash WP admin. You're going into a folder where the login screen is at. When you first, when someone first connects to your site, we go to victorsbakery.com. The first file that loads up is this index.php file. Traditionally, the very first file in a website is called index.something. Traditionally, .html, and it could be like on WordPress, index.php. If you're running something else. Some other uh, platforms, maybe, or not INEX, index.php. You might have something uh, index.asp. You have a variety of extensions, but usually it's index.something. In the case of WordPress, the first file that loads up is uh, index.php. And if we look here, on the right side we get, uh, we get columns of sizes. How large, how much content do these files have? There's one here that has 20 kilobytes, the license, you know, the, the copyright notice and all of that, 20 kilobytes, you know, a lot of lawyer ease there. Uh, and then you've got these other ones that are 3 kilobytes, 8 kilobytes, Index is only one kilobyte. It's really small. You think, how is my whole home page in this one file? Well, WordPress works basically by first loading the, uh, the index file and then loading multiple files into itself. pieces of the site. For example, the header, all the stuff in the head, a sidebar, a, a footer. So there's a file that stores everything that's in the header. 
and a file that stores everything that's in the footer, the sidebar, etc. And then all those files, all the content of those files are loaded into the index file. That's why our index is relatively small. This could be 5 kilobytes, 2 kilobytes, 10 kilobytes, and then all of this stuff is loaded into the index file dynamically the moment someone connects to my site. It all happens behind the scenes. This is why possibly a WordPress site might be slower than a Dreamweaver site if you're used to Dreamweaver, because a lot of stuff is happening behind the scenes. And usually, those pieces, the header, the sidebar, etc., are found in the particular theme. So remember when we talked about themes. We have the basic 2014 theme. We can switch to the 2013 theme. When the 2015 theme comes out, we can use it. We can use a, a variety of free and paid themes, and usually the theme comes with its own header file, footer file, even index file. And, that's, and this is where you find that. Let's open the WP Content folder. Themes, plugins. If we had also, if we've uploaded pictures, We'll have a folder here of pictures, I believe. Double-click the Themes folder, and there's a list of our 2014, 2013, and 2012 themes. Let's open 2014. And here we see footer.php, header.php, index.php, style.css, sidebar footer, sidebar content, sidebar search. So these then are all the pieces, and now notice their sizes are, are larger. These are then all of the pieces that make up our WordPress theme. The content is separate. The content is in the database. That one doesn't change but we can easily go from theme to theme, and all it does is, okay, what used to appear here was ID7. It's still going to be ID7, which is our logo, but now what's changed is the theme. It shows a different theme. And once you get into a theme, this varies all over the place. Some might have other subfolders, like a, a folder full of CSS stuff or something called gener icons, or specific images, or JavaScript stuff, or if it's multilingual, etc. So this is where then we, we, we get uh, tricky. Because again, as I said, I love it when I get a client where we start from scratch. Because I can set everything up and I know how it's set up. If I don't get that kind of client, I have to um, go in and look at this stuff. I, I take a quick look at the database. I go into the FTP, into the file manager, and look what's in there. I log into the, the, the dashboard and go through every screen and see what's there, making notes. I see what's in the widgets. I see what plugins are there. I try to reverse engineer what I'm dealing with. And so we will need to get into the file manager at a point when we talk about creating child themes. Child themes are the, the number one way to change your theme and then preserve your changes when we do updates. Remember on the previous class we talked about updates, and I think we, we did the updates. I think we did upgrade to 4.0, didn't we? Okay, so what happens was what happened was if we go in and edit our footer and put in, you know, the default it says proudly powered by WordPress. And if I go in, if we go in, and we'll do this most likely, and we change the, um, the, that to say copyright 2014 Victor Campos. 
and then when WordPress 4.1 comes out and we click update, we will get brand new clean versions of all of our files. And therefore, our changes that we made to footer get erased. That's just the nature of it. We cannot opt out of that. If you do update a theme or WordPress and such, it would most likely erase your changes, especially if you made them to the files themselves. So that's why we're going to talk extensively about child themes. And honestly, this one is not, uh, not that easy to do, but we've got a lot of step-by-step -step documentation, and I'm going to do it. We're going to do it together. There will be a video on it, and you'll be able to do it. But you will want to do this if you customized your theme, edited your files, and you plan on doing upgrades. You say, okay, no problem. I'll never do upgrades. The problem with that is that there might be a vulnerability in this file that allows someone to hack your site. You don't do the update, you're vulnerable. You do the updates, you're not vulnerable. Or less vulnerable. But we have to talk about child themes. And we have to do it via this file manager screen. Again, it sounds kind of uh, esoteric at the moment, but when we do it, we'll see how it makes sense. Any questions so far? When you, when you talk about this, customize is in body, right? Exactly. Body? Customizing, I usually mean the coding. Mm -hmm. And um, the jQuery, mm -hmm. it comes with uh, the custom WordPress. It does. Yes. Uh, so if you're familiar with the jQuery, uh, you will be able to use jQuery if you know how to write your own code. It comes with WordPress. Okay, so one of the things then we should do early on is set up a child theme. We're going to do it here with our plain old brand new WordPress 4.0. Notice right now we're dealing more with like the back end stuff rather than content. That's what we're going to spend today on pretty much, these concepts. When we come back next time, we're, we're going to resurrect the site we were working on last month and then apply what we've learned to it so that it actually sticks. What we do today, we don't need to you don't need to take with you if you don't want. We will resurrect your site and apply what we're doing to that site. But here I'm just showing you on a clean WordPress site where we're all on the same page. I want to set up a child theme. Uh, so I want to first RTFM. Have you heard of that term? It stands for Read the Funky Manual. <laughs> so we're going to RTFM right now a bit. Go to your web browser and let's go to wordpress.org. Wordpress.org is where we went to download the WordPress uh, core files. But here is also where we would go for support documentation. Everything about what WordPress is, how it works, tricks and tips and such, and then the forums where you can go and ask, my thing doesn't work because of this, please help. And probably someone has asked that question and they'll point you to the answer. So if my help in class or my videos aren't as helpful as they could be, there's the forums. I found a lot of great help there myself also. We'll go to wordpress.org and we'll go to support documentation. Usually when I look up this document, I search for it, 
rather than trying to find it, let me just try one thing here. So from the main page, where? Yeah, we're just down further. Oh, I don't know. I didn't see it. Okay. So here's what we want. Uh, here we are. They call this the codex. Have you heard of that term before? Um, the codex is the, the basically the manual. Everything about WordPress. So you'll often see if you do searches, if, if you go on Yahoo and you search, how do I do this in WordPress? Oftentimes the result will come from the codex straight from the developer, straight from the horse's mouth. So here we're under support documentation and it's divided into lots of sections because WordPress is complicated. Um, and under the working with themes section, you should see child themes. Click on child themes. child themes. A child theme is a theme that inherits the functionality of another theme called the parent theme. Child themes allow you to modify or add to the functionality of that parent theme. A child theme is the best, safest, and easiest way to modify an existing theme, whether you want to make a few tiny changes or extensive changes. Instead of modifying the theme files directly, you can create a child theme and override within. So what we're saying here Eventually what we're going to do is, this is our basic theme, it's black and white, it's pretty plain. We do have an option to do a little bit of customization, but that depends on how much the theme authors want, how much control the theme author, authors want to give you or bothered to give you. Like I would like to change so that these bars over here are pink instead of black or red or a gradient color, or have a picture back here behind it. And there's no easy way to do that by going into customize of this particular theme. So colors, okay, I'm gonna change the color of my theme to, you know, to red. No, it's changing something else, not what I thought. So that's why sometimes we'll need to change the, the code itself. And that gets us to the conundrum about, well, if we change the code and we do updates, we will probably lose our code. Lose our code. That's where the child theme comes in, and it's saying, they themselves are saying it. So why use a child theme? If you modify an existing theme and it is updated, your changes will be lost. Not might, will be lost. With a child theme, you can update the parent theme, which might be important for security or functionality, and still keep your changes. It can speed up development time. It's a great way to get started if you're just learning WordPress theme development. There's another class that is offered at this campus that is about uh, working with um, uh, creating, creating WordPress themes. Because that's a whole new can of worms. Do we use an existing theme? Do we purchase a nice theme? Do we make our own theme? Do we edit a theme? A lot of things to do. And so if you work with child themes, it's sort of uh, like um, training wheels. You don't have to create a theme from scratch, and you'll be able to edit an existing theme, customize it as you want, and your changes will not be lost when you update. So we'll do this together in just a moment. We're doing the overview. And notice it says how to create the child theme. Create a directory in your themes directory to hold a child theme. The theme directory is WP Content Themes. We were just there. We found where all our themes are stored. You should name the directory without any spaces as part of the name, and it is common practice to use the name of the parent theme folder with dash child appended to it. For example, if you're making a child for the 2014 theme, name your folder 2014 child, dash child, like this. We've got 2011, 14, 13, and we're going to make a new folder called 2013 child, and then proceed. We are naming the child theme child appended to it for didactical purposes, but you can name the folder whatever you like as long as you include the line template in your CSS file, which we'll look at. 
So again, it does not need to be called dash child, but I do that because it helps me see, okay, here's the original parent, here's the child. And I'm not going to name the parent parent. I'm going to leave the name alone. But I'm going to name the child whatever dash child. In the directory, in the folder of the child theme, it really only needs one file, style.css file. Our current theme, 2014, has a page that defines the look of the 404 error page, the look of the comments page, the look of the content, or the look of the footer content, and the header, and such and then a style.css file, which controls everything else. What color font in your site? What color font in your footer? What uh, logo, perhaps? Logo placement? Colors of your sidebars? Um, sizes of your text? The size of a picture inside of a comment? So the style.css file is one of the most powerful and important files in your, in your theme. 76 kilobytes in my case here. A lot of information in it. So if we are going to create a child theme, it needs at least a style CSS file. What we actually write in it is listed here, and we'll do it in a moment, and I'll explain what we're seeing. And once we do that, basically, we have a child theme which we then need to activate and then use. And then we'll be safe. When we update to 2014 version 2.0, whatever changes we made will be safe. And that's the best tactic to do. It's obviously an advanced tactic. That's why I didn't do it on the first month. But we will do it together, and we'll see how it goes. But uh, this is what I do for my clients. And the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Perhaps in future versions, WordPress 5.0 or something, they will make it even easier, where there's a button that says, Make Child Theme. But right now, we're going to have to go into the folder and make a new folder and copy some files and such. And there are plugins, I believe. I haven't really looked at them. I'm still doing it the manual way. But there are plugins out there that's supposed to do this for you with a few clicks of a button. If anyone knows of those plugins, let me know. I'll research it, and we'll see if we can use them in the class. So if this seems a little bit daunting, don't worry, we'll do it together. But let's take a break first. It's about 11.05. We'll take a 10-minute break. We're back at 11.15, and then we'll create a child theme.